Good morning, everybody. Buongiorno. I'm going to do this in English because um, we're recording this, and at least for the first few minutes that we do the opening comments, a hundred years from now, when someone looks at the tape, they'll know what's going on, especially if those who don't speak Italian. But all kidding aside, uh, my name's Anthony Tambury, and I'm the dean of the John D. Calandro Italian American Institute, and I want to welcome you all to this first um, activity of a nascent uh, Italian language resource laboratory. It is um, uh, an enterprise or an initiative or um, a type of center. We can't use that term for bureaucratic reasons, which has to do with all sorts of things within the university. It takes 10 years to get a center approved and all of that stuff. So we're calling ourselves a laboratory as opposed to maybe a collective or a cooperative or whatever. Um, and in the program, you'll see um, our, our uh, goals um, that um, uh, upon which we're going to build this laboratory. It is um, something that um, was born out of the last couple of years of collaboration with um, a number of um, consulates around, Italian consulates around the country, all, all coordinated primarily through New York and through the embassy in Washington, uh, which started with the crisis of the AP back in 2008 and um, continued through what we hope is a rebuilding of the AP, although I sh should underscore at the beginning that um, <clears throat> we have our work cut out for us. We are we may not be in a crisis mode, but we're definitely in an emergency mode with regard to the enrollments um, in the advanced placement courses and especially the enrollments of those who take the exam. So if you keep that in mind for, um, for when you go back to your various homes and interact with some of the local teachers. But first, I, there are a number of people I need to thank for this workshop specifically and for the whole idea of this um, Italian language resource laboratory. And first and foremost, I need to, even though he's not here, uh, I need to thank the president of Queens College, whose name is James Meiskens. He's a, he's a professor of philosophy, and it's so nice to have a president from in the humanities, I must say, first and foremost. Um, but President Meiskens, since my arrival, has been extremely generous uh, with regard to the Calandra Institute and has always provided us with the necessary means for us to move forward, not just to maintain, but indeed to move forward. And um, he's not here today only because he wanted to come, but I insisted that he take the day off since he works, you know, presidents work long hours and fly in and out and so on and so forth, and he just came back from a trip somewhere in the East, China, Japan, or something like that. So um, anyway, he, he sends his greetings. Um, there, there are people, uh, the staff of Calandra, um, a number of people on the staff of Calandra. You, there are two of them, um, yes, two of them here today. One is Rosario Musco, who's giving you your folders. The other is Lucia Grillo, who is in the back with the camera and who um, eventually will lead a team of uh, people who will eventually edit this and it'll be up on con calma, you know, no, 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 uh, no haste here, and it'll definitely be up on YouTube, and we'll make sure that it's available eventually to everybody. Um, it, we'll get DVD dubs made from CUNY TV. Um, there are other couple of other people in Calandra. One is Carmen Pizzirusso, who is our technician and who um, makes sure that whatever is humanly possible to make work works. And so um, then there are people within the Italian diplomatic community that have been extremely supportive uh, of Calandra in general, but also of this workshop. One you'll hear from him soon is um, Carlo Davoli, uh, who um, was instrumental in moving the idea of this forward, especially to get the funding. We were at an actful, I think it was, in, um, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, we'll get it. We were, at, <laughs> we were at an actful almost a year ago, I guess, we can say 10, 11 months ago, 10 months ago, and the idea of doing a workshop of this sort came up. Um, uh, Carlo was there, um, the Minister Magipi, Cristiano Magipinto is there, the director of the Ufficio Scolastico of um, 
the embassy, Lucia della Monta was there. These are people who made sure, who on the side of the Italian government, made sure that this didn't get lost uh, on anyone's desk, and here we are. Um, the other person from whom you'll hear soon is Roberto Dolci, uh, who is from the University uh, for Foreigners in Perugia, uh, with whom we have uh, three different types of agreements. And um, Roberto is basically a scholar in residence here at least four months a year. Um, and so we've, we've collaborated on a number of initiatives, not just um, language uh, teaching and learning, but also at different levels. And, um, and, and so I, I like to think that we're um, perhaps the only institute uh, of this type Italian or Italian-American, except for those few places that have their own campus, of course, in Italy, the enviable <laughs> few universities that have their sort of, uh, you know, 40 or 50 acres in Florence, for example, um, uh, who are friends of ours down the street. Um, <laughs> we, have, we have this wonderful exchange of teaching uh, that goes on. Right now it's one way, but it, actually it's been two way. Actually I should say it's been two way. So Roberto has also taught for us and a couple of us have gone over there and taught mini courses for them. So as I said before, um, we have a type of emergency for the AP with regard to enrollment and so please keep that in mind. I'm happy here. There's a mixture of people here from both K through 12 and the university and that's very important. Unfortunately it's a bit of a um, a flaw within the Italian uh, teaching community in the United States. There seems to be too much of a separation between the colleges, universities, and K through 12. And I say that as both someone who teaches at the university level, but also who started out his teaching career as a high school teacher. Um, we need to make sure that those uh, channels of communication not only are open, but indeed become collaborative, become actually working communications because um, those of us who have, who teach at the university at this point and who um, always wonder about numbers for majors as the dean comes down and says, gee, how many majors do you have? How sustainable is this uh, program in Italian studies? Now that doesn't happen. That's not a problem at places like you know, Columbia and NYU and um, even Queens College or, or Hunter College, for example, within the CUNY system, but it is, I know, it can be an issue at other places, and I have taught at other places where indeed it was an issue. So, um, so we just need to open that up more. <clears throat> and, um, and perhaps, seeing how some of us in this audience are members of both the AATI and the AAIS, perhaps we need to speak to the leadership in both of those organizations to see if there can be a better collaboration between them. And, and with that, I'll stop my uh, soapbox uh, uh, harangue. <laughs> um, so I want to welcome you. And as I do, I want to also give the opportunity to Carlo Davoli, who is the director of the educational office here at the Consulate General um, of New York. Uh, as I said before, we probably wouldn't be here if he didn't push um, on his end. And so without further ado, Carlo, prego. Uh, 